Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to cover a topic that I personally find very, very interesting, and that is membrane asymmetry and sightedness. So first we'll talk about what that means. What do we mean when we say membrane asymmetry and membrane sightedness? And then we're going to talk about how that sightedness comes to be, uh, the cellular processes that create the different insides and outsides of membranes. So first let's start by addressing the fact that biological membranes, they are made up of a lipid bilayer. I've drawn one here. So lipid bilayer, meaning that you've got some um, phospholipids uh, and there's two layers. There's the outer layer right here that's mainly red and blue and the inner layer right here that's mainly um, green and purple. And each one of these things is a, is a phospholipid. So you've got the phospholipid heads, that's the phosphate head, head groups, and then the lipid tails. So phosphate head groups, lipid tails in the middle. So you've got the, um, you know, the hydrophilic character on the outside of each leaflet and the hydrophobic character on the inside where the tails are. So these lipid bilayers are asymmetric. What does this mean? It means they are composed of two leaflets that have different compositions. So you have different types of phospholipids on the outer leaflet and different types of phospholipids on the inner leaflet. So that's what we mean by the asymmetry there. And so I'm gonna point out a few features here. I've drawn some transmembrane proteins. Um, right here we have a, a, a co-transporter that's transporting uh, protons and glucose into the cell. We've also got some peripheral proteins down here. Of course, those are ones that are associated with the membrane but don't go all the way through it like the transmembrane proteins do. Um, peripheral proteins, they are usually on the cytosolic side. Uh, I'll write that right here. Cytosolic. Um, that's the, basically the inside, the side that's touching the, the cytoplasm or the cytosol. And then we have some glyco appendages. These are basically uh, branched sugar chains that can be attached to either membrane proteins or to phospholipids themselves. These are typically on the outer or extracellular leaflet. I've already written outer over here. I'm gonna put extracellular now in parentheses. So, um, okay, so when we're talking about the different compositions, we've got the different types of phospholipids that are present on one leaflet versus another, the fact that peripheral proteins are usually on the inside, the fact that we've got the glucose, uh, the sugar, basically sugar chains on the outside. Um, also, you know, these transmembrane proteins, they'll have an outside, like an extracellular facing domain and an intracellular facing domain. So, so what, it, what this transmembrane protein looks like down here is different from what it looks like up here. And so this is really critical to the functioning of the membrane. In order for the membrane to carry out its roles, for the membrane proteins to carry out their roles, everything has to be in there in the correct orientation, with the correct things facing outward and the correct things facing inward. Now let's talk about how, how dynamic this is. We know that when we talk about the, the plasma membrane, about biological membranes in general, you often hear them referred to as like um, fluid mosaics. So the fluid mosaic model is maybe something that you've heard of before. And here, you know, the fluidity means that these things are very dynamic. You can have things that are moving around in the membrane. These phospholipids are moving with respect to each other. They can be rotating. You know, this one right here can move over here and this one can move over here. And so there's a lot of movement in these membranes. And so we're gonna talk now about three different kinds of movement. The first is lateral diffusion. So lateral diffusion is moving within one leaflet. So a phospholipid or a protein um, that is moving, um, you know, basically from here to here, or from here to here, or from here to here. And so that's the lateral diffusion. There's also rotation, which refers to the fact that these, these phospholipids and these bilayers, you know, they, um, they're generally able to rotate, so they can kind of spin around like this marker is doing, spin around in place, that's the rotation. So the lateral diffusion and the rotation, those things happen quite frequently. 
What is more rare is what we call transverse diffusion. So the transverse diffusion is movement from one leaflet to another. So we're talking about like a red one moving down here to be with the purple and green ones, or a purple or green one moving from this leaflet up to this leaflet where mainly the red and blue ones are. That's the transverse diffusion. It does happen, but it requires enzymes. These are known as flip bases and flop bases, and we'll talk more about those in a second. But this allows them to travel from one leaflet to another leaflet. Now, within these leaflets, the reason that I've drawn red and blue phospholipids um, on the, in the outer leaflet and green and purple in the inner leaflet is because we do see certain phospholipids that are predominantly in the outer leaflet and certain phospholipids that are predominantly in the inner leaflet. And so I have those listed down here. In the outer leaflet, that's the extracellular leaflet, we typically see sphingomyelin, phosphatidylcholine, various glycolipids. The glycolipids right here are the ones that have the sugar uh, chains, the sugar chains attached to them. So, and make sure you see the word here predominantly. That means there's a lot of sphingomyelin up here, a lot of phosphatidylcholine up here, various types of glycolipids up here, but sometimes you know, some of these things can, can flip into the inner leaflet. Sometimes things from the inner leaflet can, you know, can, can do that transverse uh, diffusion into the outer leaflet. And so it is predominantly, we're talking about kind of the big picture here. Also, you should realize that different kinds of cells in different kinds of organisms are going to have different types of phospholipids present in different um, ratios in different places. And so we're kind of speaking about just like predominantly here. And then now that we have talked about the outer leaflet phospholipids, we'll now talk about the inner leaflet phospholipids where I have green and purple drawn on the board. This is predominantly, again, predominantly, not 100%, but predominantly phosphatidylethanolamine, phosphatidylserine, phosphatidylinositol. These are all just different kinds of phospholipids. Now, you might be saying, why? Why? Why have phosphatidylserine mainly in the inner leaflet and sphingomyelin mainly in the outer leaflet? Well, it's because these, um, these phospholipids, the different types of phospholipids, they serve different purposes. They do different jobs. And I have a few of those listed here. In the outer leaflet, the outer leaflet, so the, the one that's drawn on top right here, that's the extracellular portion of the bilayer, that functions in cell attachment, in cell spreading, in cell migration, whereas the inner leaflet, the cytosolic side of the membrane, it modulates the actin cytoskeleton, it modulates certain ion channels, and so these different kinds of phospholipids, they play different roles in, you know, and that's why we see some mainly in one leaflet and some mainly in another leaflet. So now let's talk about how do we build this? How do we build the asymmetry? How do cells make sure that the right uh, phospholipids get on in one leaflet versus another leaflet? And a lot of that has to do with the endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi apparatus. So here I have um, some a drawing of a vesicle that is engaged in exocytosis. And those are probably things that you are familiar with from studying the cell. You've got a vesicles, they will move things from one place to another in the cell, um, also carry things outside the cell through exocytosis. But this is also how membranes are replenished, which I think is something students often forget and, and should remember because it's cool, right? So right here, we've got the plasma membrane and I've drawn it in kind of this dark purple brown color. Um, so we've got the intracellular side of the membrane and the extracellular or the outside side of the membrane. And what happens when a vesicle, let me write that right here, this is a vesicle. So this vesicle is carrying a few different things. It's carrying some transmembrane proteins that, it, that are embedded in, it, in its membrane. I've drawn those in blue. And it's also carrying some things. I've drawn some purple circles in there. That's just meant to be um, like proteins and small molecules um, that are being um, 
that are being sent out of the cell. They could be signaling compounds, they could be waste products. Whoops, I don't usually do that. Uh, so just something that the cell is wanting to leave, wanting to leave the cell. And so when this vesicle is constructed, it's constructed in a very specific way. Because you see, this right here, I'm gonna draw a big star, because this is important. The inside of the endoplasmic reticulum and the inside of the Golgi apparatus that I don't have drawn here, but you can Google some images, the, in, the inner membranes of those organelles and the inner membrane of the vesicle that's drawn here in red, that is continuous with the outside of the plasma membrane. So I'm gonna say that again. The endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi apparatus and the vesicles that connect them and the vesicles that they are sending out of the cell, the inner leaflets of all of those are continuous with the outside of the plasma membrane. What does that mean? Well, look at this vesicle. The inner membrane, the inner, the inner leaflet of the membrane, of the, of the lipid bilayer, is drawn in red. And here's the exocytosis happening. I'll label that here as well. And where does that inner leaflet of the membrane go? Look, here it winds up on the outside of the cell. So here we have the cytoplasm inside, and we have the extracellular matrix. I'm just gonna write ECM, the extracellular matrix outside. And where is the red? The red goes from being the inner leaflet here to the outer leaflet of the plasma membrane. So that means that the asymmetrical distribution, making sure that you get you know, the extracellular domains um, on, in, in the correct leaflet and you get the, the correct phospholipids on the correct sides and the correct inner and outer leaflets, that is all done by the endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi apparatus. I'm gonna label those um, with some initials, so ER, for endoplasmic reticulum and GA for Golgi apparatus, when they are building new membrane and when they are getting things um, sorted and processed, getting everything in the correct orientation, that's being done by the ER and the Golgi. And they are aided by two enzymes I've already mentioned called flipases and flopases. And no, I'm not making those up. So enzymes, they have cute names, I know, flipases and flopases. And I'm going to have um, another separate video on the specific work of flipases and flopases, and you can check those out. But they are responsible for getting the right uh, phospholipids in the outer versus the inner leaflet. And in order for them to be on the outer leaflet of the plasma membrane, they've got to get them to the inner leaflet of a vesicle. To get them to the inner leaflet of the plasma membrane, they've got to get them to the outer leaflet of the vesicle that's shown here in green. See, the outside of the vesicle ends up being the inside, the inner leaflet of the, I'm gonna write PM here for plasma membrane. And then also take a look at the protein orientation. So these receptors right here, they are embedded within the vesicle membrane um, this is happening way back at the endoplasmic reticulum. They are these um, transmembrane proteins, receptor proteins. They are embedded in such a way that their extracellular domains, the ones that are going to be sticking out of the cell, have to actually be pointing toward the inside of the vesicle. Again, because the inside of the vesicle is continuous with the outside of the plasma membrane. And so look what happens when you have the exocytosis happening, you eventually get what was pointed inside the vesicle is now pointing outside of the cell where they can then, you know, um, receive their ligands. I'm just going to draw some basic ligands here and then have the signaling cascades in the cell that happen when these receptors receive their ligands. And then before we conclude, one last thing to point out, this symmetry is very important. The cells work hard to maintain the asymmetry, to build it in the first place and then to maintain it. And so loss of asymmetry, if you see a cell 
that is no longer having like a distinct outer leaflet and a distinct inner leaflet, but having kind of the same ratios of the, phos of the different kinds of phospholipids in both the outer and inner leaflet, that's actually an early indicator of apoptosis or programmed cell death. So that is an unhealthy cell that is beginning apoptosis. It's beginning apoptosis. It is getting ready to basically self-destruct. And so it's no longer putting a lot of energy into keeping that membrane asymmetry to be able to carry out the functions that those different leaflets carry out. So if you're interested in learning more about this, I'm going to have some videos made soon over uh, flip bases and flop bases, also over a different kind of enzyme that um, impacts the asymmetry of membranes that are called scramblases. So I will put links to those in the description. And uh, thank you very much for watching Biology Professor. See you next time.